Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and in this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with probability theory. Uh, and I suppose a video where we're using a contingency table to explore particular uh, rules of probability. Uh, well, in this video we're going to concentrate on the addition rule. Okay? Uh, and well, let's just have a look at a particular contingency table. Let's say that we have a number of, let's say, students, and the students were asked a number of questions. They were asked, let's say, two questions. Uh, the first question was, what type of service provider had they got with respect to their, their phone? So it could be with Vodafone or Tree. Okay. These are two service providers in Ireland. And the second question was whether they're a bill pay customer, whether they pay a bill, monthly bill, or whether they pay as you go okay, with respect to their phone usage. And let's say for argument's sake that we observed that 10 of the respondents said that they were for Vodafone and bill pay. 30 said that they were Vodafone and go. 25 saying that they're, that they're three and bill pay and let's say 35 saying that they're 3 and go giving us marginal totals of 10 and 30 gives us 40 Vodafone responses uh, in relation to 3 we have 25 and 35 gives us 63 responses and in relation to bill pay we have 10 and 25 gives us 35 bill responses and 30 and 35 gives us 65 go responses given as a total when it comes to the margins uh, of 100 in each case so we asked 100 people this question or we asked 100 people two questions and what we'd like to do is we'd like to, we'd like to explore the addition rule in probability and just let me write that down here uh, the addition rule says that the probability of a or b happening is simply equal to the sum of the individual probabilities okay uh, and that's actually true when the two events are mutually exclusive mutually exclusive Okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's equal to the probability of A or B uh, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B minus the joint event when they're not mutually exclusive of each other. So there's two versions of, of the rule. So what I'd like to do is this is let's say for argument's sake that we select let's say that we select a single person at random. Okay, so let's say a person is selected is selected at random okay and what we want to know is what's the probability that the person selected is a Vodafone customer I'll just say V for Vodafone let me say V for Vodafone T for tree B for bill and G for go okay so what's the probability that they're a Vodafone customer or that they're a tree customer, let's say, for argument's sake. This is probably a bad example because, uh, bum, 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 yeah, it's probably a bad example. We probably actually need, uh, to make it a little bit more interesting, we probably actually need another another level. So let's say we have Vodafone, we have tree, and let's say, for argument's sake, that we have air is another, is another service provider, okay? So our totals are actually changing now, okay? So now we have 35, uh, 35 40 60 70 so we have 70 bill pay customers and uh, we have 100 air customers uh, in relation to the go customers we have 30 30 is 60 uh, and 60 is 120 and the 10 here gives us 130 which gives us 200 people in total we asked the question to okay so makes it a bit more interesting so what's the probability that the person selected at random uh, is a vodafone customer let's say E for air, or they're an air customer, okay, they're E. Okay? Well, because this is an or, we're going to use the addition rule. And hopefully we can see that in both cases of the addition rule, we need to sum up the individual probabilities, okay? So what's on the left-hand side is A, what's on the right-hand side of the or is B, uh, and what we need to do is calculate the individual, the simple probabilities or the marginal probabilities for those two events. So irrespective of whether they're mutually exclusive or not, we still need to calculate the two individual marginal probabilities, you can see here as well, but in the case where they're not mutually exclusive, we have to take away the joint event. Okay? So let's just figure out what this is here. I'm wondering, okay, I'm wondering, are these two events mutually exclusive of each other? Okay. Well, if they're mutually exclusive of each other, okay, it means that they share nothing in common. Okay. And I think we can actually see that here. I think we can see that in relation to, let's say, in relation to from a Venn diagram perspective, okay, the Vodafone customers are these customers here, and the Air customers are 
these customers here, if that makes sense, okay? So there's nothing shared in common, so they are mutually exclusive, okay? There's no overlap between this set of customers and this set of customers. You're either in one or the other, you're not in both. So hence, 